if, let's see, if the airbags were coming in over there, let's say, and they hit somewhere near where that big rock is over there, they'd probably bounce, oh, <laughs> whatever 100 feet would be from there. That's about a 10-story building. And when they landed again, they'd probably land way down there past where that big white rock is. And that would be the first bounce. And then the second bounce would be a little bit smaller than that, and the third bounce. So by the time we came to an end, we would probably be somewhere way down into that field over there. Um, you know, the idea of using airbags for interplanetary missions has been around since the 1960s, but it never really got too much attention because the materials really weren't there to make it happen. The airbag fabric itself is it's a material called Vectran. It's, it's, a, it's a very, very, very strong fabric and it's very resistant to tearing. And the construction we've decided to use for the, for the airbags are a single layer which holds all the air in. It's, it's basically what we call the bladder layer. It's the real construction of the bag. Then on the outside of that, we have four layers of this specific weave of Vectran. We call it the abrasion layer. We've got four layers because each layer is actually quite thin, about as, about as thin as your shirt and each impact actually tears away a layer of the fabric. And we do that on purpose so that it actually protects the layers below it. We tried some testing earlier on where we had a single layer of really, really heavy fabric, same Vectran, but it was much thicker than your denim jeans actually. And we found that even being that strong, a single layer would still get caught in a rock and just tear wide open. And so we found that four layers is much better than just a single strong layer. It's, it's been like having, like building a family, creating a family of people working together to produce this, this hardware and software and mission concepts. And, and we're still like a family. That's the wonderful thing about these small projects is that you know everybody, uh, you learn to respect each other, you learn how to work with each other, you have your family squabbles and your family celebrations. And so this is like our offspring. I worked on Pathfinder and in particular the rover since uh, 19, started in 1992, in July. So yes, you get very, uh, very attached to these things. They're not, uh, they're not quite alive, but, uh, but they almost are. The Pathfinder team became a very, very close-knit, very special group of people. Their sense of commitment toward this mission was really what made it happen. And there was never a time when every individual's contribution wasn't essential. And there wasn't a time in which we, uh, people stopped trying to make it better, or at least just never, we never stopped looking for potential problems that we could fix. Everybody sees the problem from a slightly different perspective. And together, though, they come up with something that's, you know, that's a, generally a breakthrough. And for Pathfinder, those occurred sometimes in minutes, you know, the, uh, it'd be a problem and, and bang, somebody would see the solution and, and we'd go off. And we didn't ponder it for weeks on end. We said, well, that's, that makes sense. Go do that. And uh, part of the way that worked is because people were in such close proximity and in close communication. And uh, that set the tone for the team.
people expected and felt uh, part of, of a special group. The managers were not aloof, the workers were supported. Uh, we were on a first name, I was on a first name basis with everybody from the, from the ladies that built the cable and the guys that were machining the aluminum, all, obviously all the way up to the, you know, the top of the project team and the, and the lab management. That's, that's the way to create a team and we, and we did that really well. Good evening, Earthlings. Yesterday, NASA scientists told the world they may have found an answer to the age-old question, are we alone? The scientists invited their peers to share in their research about a piece of four billion year old rock they say came from Mars. We are committed to the aggressive plan we have put in place for, ro for robotic exploration of Mars. I should tell you that the first mission is scheduled to land on Mars on July the 4th, 1997, Independence Day. T-minus 15 seconds. 12. T-minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, green board, 5, 4, 3, main engine start, 1, 0, and liftoff of the Delta rocket with Mars Pathfinder. And the vehicle has cleared the tower. Next stop, Mars, and without punching a black hole in the federal deficit, NASA today sent off the first interplanetary land rover to Mars under the space agency's new marching orders, make it faster, better, cheaper. There's still no such thing as a free lunch or launch, but as Scott Belly reports, the payoff in terms of discovery could be huge.